here we go. Main event time for the 450s. Third race of the season for the 2015 Monster Energy AMA Supercross and FIM World Championship. Roxon with one win, Tomac with another. Who will it be tonight? Let's go to Jenny Taff for progressive pre-race report. Well, one rider that we're happy to see racing this year is Brock Tickle. He suffered numerous injuries in Toronto last year. And I talked to Brock about the mental toughness involved in this sport, what it needed for him to come back. He said he didn't start riding until mid-November, and it was hard to get back on the bike. But once he did, he said it all came back to him. All that fear goes away. It's because he loves the sport so much. He has a new mechanic, Rich Matchett. I talked to Rich about Brock. He said the guy just loves what he does. He comes ready to work every single day. That fear is nothing that's going to get in the way of Brock Tickle this year. Well, your journey starts here. 2015 450 Rookies brought to you by Discount Tire. Here's how they uh, have stacked up so far this season. Anderson's been the best. Yeah, Anderson with that second in the opening round was really, really impressive. But, you know, Wilson, Seeley, Baggett, these guys have been struggling a little bit, but they have a great opportunity here tonight. And I just wonder if we're going to have somebody else lead laps. So far this season, only Tomac and Roxon have led laps in the main event. KTM bringing you the spider camp view for the 450 main. Dungey was pretty, pretty impressive in that heat race also. There you see the Rocky Mountain ATV MC rider lineup. Roxon has the red number plate because he is the points leader by nine over Dungey. Riders going through all the pre-race rituals. 30 second board is up with Diana Dahlgren, Miss Monster Energy Supercross. Time to get your elbows up, your attitude on. How aggressive are you going to ride here? Championship has seen Roxon win and Tomac win. Will we have a repeat winner or a new one for 2015 in the 450 class? Here we go, Anaheim live on Fox Sports 1. Sneaking into the inside. Who's going to come out with the lead? Boy, this one's tight as they come through that first corner. They're still deciding it. I think it was short that's going yeah. to be credited with the whole shot, lost he's, the position, and now he's got the spot back again. He's going to have the lead, but for how long? He's got a lot of company from Davey Millsaps on the 18, and Roxon's right there on the 94. He's on the yellow bike, flying through the nighttime sky. Well, this is just the type of start that Millsaps needed also to get his championship quest on the right track. And also in this mix, oh, here comes Roxon inside of Millsaps. There's second place changing hands. And coming into this one is the one they call El Hombre. Here he comes, sliding for third. Anderson's coming through. Jason Anderson on the 21. The Rockstar bike rode so well here, Jeff, making the podium in the season opener two weeks ago. Roxon thinking about the lead. He's got it. Yes, he does. And how about Chad Reed, two-time winner here in this same building last year, fifth off the start. Oh, oh, Shark goes right up and over the bars, collects Anderson who can't escape him. Short is trying to shake this one off and he drops back down to his knees. Andrew took a really hard hit. Oh, that is a tough blow for that Butler Brothers team. BTO Sports KTM, they lost Brayton earlier in the night and now Look at Reed in third now. Chad Reed takes advantage of the mishaps for Anderson and Short. He moves to third. Dungey's right here in fourth now. He's second in the championship, don't forget. And Reed, fourth in the title hunt. Boy, could he use a good, make that fit for Reed as they shift around. And he really e needs a good run. Eli Tomac, he's worked his way from eighth off the first lap, made a couple of passes. He's up to sixth now. There he is, number three, last week's winner. A dominating win last week, and he's going to go around the outside as it looked like Seeley yeah, he might have made it. a Yeah, Tomac has the spot from Seeley. Now Dungey working Reed. Three championships between the two of them. Two go to the Australian Reed, one for the Minnesota native Dungey. Chad Reed tied with 
numerous Supercross legends for the most wins in this building. Eight main event wins here. Watching Roxon to the right. He's opening up a gap, 1.6 seconds back to Millsaps. He's got his hands full. The discount tire back 22 of Reed. Well, Reed, he needs to get busy right now because Roxon up front just laid down a 102.8. Reed was a 103 and Millsaps with a 104. Dungey tries to get inside as they go under the over under. He's going to go inside here. Reed trying to find the power to the ground. Fighting for the traction. Wow. They really have to be good around that start straight. It's so slippery. The tires are just not hooking up on that hard ground. Dungey knocks Reed off the podium for now. Looks like Kennard. Kennard's getting into the mix there with Tickle and those guys. Look. There's six, seven riders battling here basically for second place. Marsh has crawled up into here too on the 51. Right now, Barsh is in seven. Watch Dungey here. He's Can gonna he have get the inside. Up? No. That's gonna help Reed out too as he closes back in. Reed goes wide. Let's see if he cuts. Oh, he's going all the way to the high line there. Here's Dungey inside as we go under the over-under. And the Red Bull KTM factory rider finds himself in second. Oh, Barsha oh, gets in there. Down goes Seeley. Seeley's on the ground. There goes Baggett by. Here's Wilson. He's going to get him around him as well. Toyota replay. Watch this move here. Oh, Andrew. Oh, short, yeah. He goes down hard, takes Anderson with him. Watch the second look here. He just doesn't get the pop that he needs. And watch right here, he goes forward. Oh. Anderson gets collected up there. Anderson is back in 13th right now, Jeff. Short hit really hard. I hope he's okay after that. That was a sudden stop there at the end. He did not continue. He is done for this race tonight. Ken Roxon has a five second lead over Dungey. Roxon had the third fastest lap time and Dungey had the fastest time last time around, just a couple of tenths quicker than Roxon. Everybody chasing the soaring eagle Jimmy John Suzuki factory racing number 94 here tonight. Millsap's last podium, Vegas, May of 2013, as Barsha comes past, making it even tougher for Millsap's to break through from that and get back onto the podium here tonight. Kennard and Barsha, here's Reed battling with Tomac. They're fighting over third. This is a great battle right here. Tomac up to fourth. Like I mentioned, eighth on the first lap. Really having to work hard to get through this stacked field that we have here in Monster Energy Supercar. So okay, he's taking the split, taking a different line. And maybe the position. Yep. Now it's faster. I have not seen that inside through the split be faster, but Tomac did a 2-3-1 sequence through there and is really making it work. Closing in on the halfway point of this main event. 20 laps the distance. Anderson moves up one. He's up to 12th now. It's Roxon, Dungey, Tomac, Reed, Kennard, your top five. Barsha, Tickle, Millsats, Baggett, and Seeley rounding out the top 10. The pace is really quick. All three all of our top three was in the 102 second lap times along with Kennard. Everybody else was 103 and above. This is going to be a nice, uh, nice finish here. Seven laps of 20 could be a nice finish here for Reed if he could keep going at this pace because his season has been uh, less than what he expected. Now Kennard going to try that opposite lane to see if he can do what is Honda stable mate Tomac did and take advantage and get around Reed. Reed just kept enough wheel on Kennard there to hold the position. It'll be interesting to see if Chad takes that line away and goes that way on the next lap. Yeah, and, and most of these riders use the, the left side through the split all day long, and so. Oh, Kennard oh, jumps right into the back of Reed. They both go down and bar 
Sasha goes by. Oh no! Reed had the best race of the year going for the 22. Oh, he's oh, going to take him not wide. happy with Kanan at all. At all. And he voices his opinion. Gives him a little attitude there. That might cost him, Ralph. That's a lot of attitude. Well, we said you got to get your elbows up and your attitude on. And Reed just let it show. His well, last podium. Watch here. Kennard just makes a bad decision. Reed was committed to going to the inside, and Kennard was. Watch here. He just goes around the outside. Evidently, he was just not anticipating Reed going to the inside. Both riders come together. Luckily, both riders get back up. And then here, Reed takes Kennard a little wide while he's pulling a tear off. Kennard no. goes down once again. Well, Reed's frustration is worse. because the last time Chad was on the podium was when he won here at the third race in Anaheim a year ago. And now he's going to find himself dropping in the points. He sits right now ninth on the track. And everybody, Jason Roxon, who's looking to extend his points lead. Now, Dungey has closed the gap up a little bit, Jeff. It was five seconds. It's down to 3.8. We're not even to the halfway point yet, and Ryan Dungey has uncorked some serious speed. He was the fastest lap, the fastest lap last time around. 102 for our leaders. Tomac 103, he sets in third now. This first and third only separated by 6.8 seconds. There's a lot of racing left, Ralph. Sure is. Some ruts starting to develop, too, in some of these corners, Jeff. Well, talked about this track here, these 180s, these open turns, how once it came time to race for points and money here in these main events, quite a bit of carnage. And I just wonder if once again, like in the 250 race, if this turn right here won't be where the main event winner is determined. Dungey's got to catch him. There he is. We'll see if he's closing when they go over the finish line jump again. It's coming up. It was 3.8. See where we are this time. 3.5. He picked up a couple of tenths. It continues. And he can see him, and they're finally going to see some left traffic in front of him. Here we are halfway, and they're finally catching up to somebody. And we've talked this season, Ralph, quite a bit about how stacked the field is, how close the competition is. At round one here, only two riders were lapped. 20 riders finished on the lead lap. That's almost unheard of. And then last week, 17 riders finished on the lead lap. And to put it into perspective, last season, the most riders that were on the lead lap was 14. That's amazing. It's been a pretty stout field here in 2015. Deep, deep, deep. I think, I think Roxon's stretched it out a little bit here on Dungey this, this time around. Well, we'll find out. It was down to 3-5. It's down oh. to 3-3. Ryan Dungey keeps chipping away at it. Now, how far back is Tomac? Here he is. Tomac's losing time. He is. It's 7-5 to him, between him and uh, Roxon. So Chad Reed, we're hearing now, has been black flat, Jeff. Not only did, I thought it might cost him a little fine, but that's, that's might big. back, too. I, I had enough meetings with the AMA officials, and the one thing that I take away from it was retaliation is always wrong. Right? Yeah. The, it's always, that's where you get penalized. Well, and with that black flag, he has to pull off the track. We'll see if he uh, pays out. attention to it. Pylon shows him. Shows him out. Yeah, he's, he's done. Oh, and his teammate Grant right there shows him out also. So discount tire 2-2 Motorsports having a rough night. That's Grant right there. Not sure what the issue was, but no problems for Roxon right now. Boy, having a nice clean ride out front, just focusing on hitting his lines perfectly. And it's hard to say 
Yeah, you know, I mean, his lap times are pretty impressive, and Dungy's just been a couple of tenths quicker. But if Dungy really be caught up to the back of Roxon, would, would Roxon have any extra speed there? Eight laps to go. We're Roxon, probably going to find out. Roxon has been on the podium every race so far. He's led the most laps this year, too. Whoa, was that a quad? Tomac just un uncorked a double and then a quad in that first rhythm section. Let's see if that helps his lap time. He's 8.8 .8 seconds behind. Here's Barsha trying to make it onto the podium. Barsha with, was 10th on the first lap, up to fourth now. And has not been on the podium this year. Oh, oh. Baggett! Loses it. Goes right into the face of that next jump. Remember, that's, this is where Brayton went down and was injured. Baggett, on the other hand, got just high enough, just over the top of that jump. Yep. Ooh, Roxon. Do you see the rear end starting to dance around? Let's watch here with Baggett and Tickle. Watch right here, just on top of the lip of that jump. He's gonna get back going. Clutch lever was bent out of position. Three seconds. It's down to three even between Roxon and Dungey with seven to go. Dungey trying to work his way past Albertson. Dungey looks like he's really charging hard. Oh, he misses the triple. That's going to cost him. Cost him big. What happened there? Did he not get the drive? Made a little mistake in the turn. Yep. The, the ruts coming out of that right hander before that triple is starting to get pretty deep. And let's see how much it cost him. Cost him a full second. One yeah. second and a half. Second, yeah, second and a half. Oh, that's devastating for Ryan. He had had the momentum going in his direction. That's going to give Ken Roxon a little bit of cushion here. Just riding perfect laps, just like he did in round one at the opener here when he dominated the main event, doing the same thing. Well, if he can win this one, then the next thing that's going to come up is can Ken Roxon sweep the three races at Anaheim. And it looked like Roxon had just lapped Nick Way. Way was in 15th. So as opposed to the, the first two races, starting to, starting to chip away at some of those lap riders here. And Tomac drops more time, 9.1 seconds behind Roxon. Well, he's riding smooth, and everybody else is forced to push hard to try to make up that ground, and that's where they're making their mistakes. Yeah, well, Barsha, he's been involved in quite a bit of uh, bar banging here tonight, but I think those guys at the uh, Auto Trader Toyota Yamaha are going to be pretty happy that Barsha's putting in a nice, solid ride here. Barsha had a sixth and an eleventh in the first two rounds, so fourth is going to be his best finish of the season if he can stay there. Same thing for Tickle, who sits back and fifth just in front of Seeley here. Well, for Barsha, this would be his first top five of the year if he can hang on as we watch this fight here between Wilson and Millsaps, eighth and ninth. Millsaps was fifth last week after a 19th in the opener. And of course, Wilson. First two rounds were not good, 15th and 17th, so this is definitely going to better his season. This could end up being a pivotal race in the championship as we march on here with Reed getting the black flag and losing all those points. And some of these other guys, Anderson had a really good run going. He's now in seventh. Roxon pulling away. Dungey has cut it back to 3.6. And Ralph, I'm taking a look at Wilson. He's got something hanging from his left boot. Hope that doesn't affect uh, his grip on the foot peg. Maybe it's shaken off by now. Maybe a piece of plastic or something. Oh, it's something on the foot peg. Yeah, probably some plastic. Drag it on the bottom. Some How sort about of Weimer? Piece of banner or something. 
Weimer's back in 18th. He's been it's a lap down. He's been lapped. He's, he was 11th on the first lap, and since then, he's dropped back to 18th. So, looking at three to go, and we talk about the possibility of Ken Roxon sweeping the three races here in Anaheim, as you see him on the right side of the screen. The last time that was done was Chad Reed in 2008. Pretty strong ride here for Wilson. He's riding that Red Bull KTM for the first time this year. Don't Adapting forget. to a new brand, new bike. Starting to come together for him here. Jeff, don't forget, too, in 08, that was one of Chad Reed's championship years when he swept all three. Yeah, he had an outstanding year that, that season. Wilson in eighth. He uh, is 15th in the championship. Tied with Chad Reed, who's dropped like a rock here tonight because of the black flag issue. Notice there on the pylon, too, it shows that Michael Lessie's out of the race. After that heat race win, that's got to be pretty disappointing. Here's Blake Baggett running in 10. First week of working with great Ricky Johnson. Well, and for Baggett, he was 12th in the opener, 13th last week in Phoenix. He stays in 10. This would be a career best here, and it only is third 450 main event. It's Trey Kennard. Had a rough night. Yeah, it has been. He was right in the thick of it, right there in striking distance of a podium finish, but He's one fifth, mistake led to another. Fifth in the points. He's alive for the, the fight. Mac, working our way back here to the 24, Metcalf, who's 12. So what exactly is that hanging up uh, Wilson's bike? Well, we got some video to show you. SX Mo. Yeah, it looks like a piece of uh, plastic there. Yeah, hanging on the foot peg. Shouldn't bother him at all, though. I'm not sure where he would have got that. And here's Ken Roxon on the final lap. Making it look easy. Team owners, Kerry Hart, and Ricky Carmichael, and the rest of the Soaring Eagle, Jimmy John, Suzuki team have to be really happy with how Ken Roxon has started out the season, led every lap at the opener, has led every lap so far here tonight in round three and a second round two. And as it sits right now, 12 point lead in the championship. And they've got two riders in the top five because Tickle's right there too. It, that, a fifth for Tickle is an outstanding ride. No doubt about it coming back off of injury, but Ken Roxon is going to hold on to the red plate. Checkered flag away. Here he comes, winning two in Anaheim so far in 2015. Points leader Ken Roxon takes the first two races of the year in Anaheim and extends the points lead. What a night it has been for Ken Roxon. He has Angel Stadium dialed in, and we will hear from Roxon in just a moment. Don't go anywhere because complete post race coverage starts right now on Fox Sports Live with Ryan Field and Cole Wright.